Finally, am I right? 12 years after its creation, Sengoku Rants has finally been officially released in North America by Manga Gamer. If you had told me this was going to happen way back in 2008, I would have called you a crazy person. But hey, here we are, and hopefully neither of us are in a straitjacket. If you've ever been too scared to dive into the Rants franchise before, now is your chance. Sengoku Rance is the well-beloved entry in the series, widely considered to be the fan favorite. Regardless of whether you enjoy it or not, it 100% is the reason anyone in the West ever got the chance to experience the Rance franchise in the first place, due to a fan translation by Takajun of the now-defunct Yandere translations, released in 2009. This made it the first entry in the Rance series to ever receive an English translation, with the next one being a fan TL of Rance 02 in 2011. Sengoku Rants is a visual novel strategy game hybrid. Weird, I know, but no worries. Primers are here as always to go over anything you need to know. Visual novel primers for those who are new are introduction videos where I do an overview of visual novel, covering background info, a bit of plot and gameplay, and my personal opinions of the game. For older viewers, I decided to revamp the formula to make it a bit more interesting for those who've already played the game, with a much bigger opinion section among other things, so look forward to that. Before we get started, I'm going to throw this up here. This is a Rans game, so of course 18 plus elements will be in it. However, this video will be viewable by everyone. With that said, hey, it's a pretty fun game with great music, gameplay, characters, and kind of pushes the boundary of what you can consider to be a visual novel. If that doesn't sound good to you, the dang Mr. Crazy High Expectations, hopefully this primer convinces you otherwise. I've already covered two entries in the franchise, which means I've also already done two overviews for the Rant series as a whole, so I'll just link the more detailed one on the top right corner. For those who don't feel like clicking though, here's a quick summary. Rants is a super long running series of visual novel RPG hybrids started in 1989 by Alisoft that recently ended with Rants X Kessen in 2018. It follows the many adventures of the eponymous character Rants, a brutal hero motivated by his amazing go of a uh, bang every fair maiden of the land. A respectable go as any I suppose, but definitely should not be imitated. Every game in the franchise follows one of Rance's many adventures, and all together acts as one continuous story taking place over a couple of years. Each game can be played separately on its own as a complete package, that said of course it's more enjoyable to play the entire series, as key characters introduced in each game remain equally as important in future titles, returning both as playable characters or key figures in the plot. Sengoku Rance is the 7th game in the series, taking place right after Rance 6, The Collapse of Zeth. It can also be considered as a spiritual successor to Alisoft's Final Fantasy, Kichiku o Rance, a game which, just like Final Fantasy, was Alisoft's last ditch effort to incorporate everything they had planned for the series before they went bankrupt. Luckily, that game went on to become one of the best selling arrow games ever, and Alisoft didn't get torn down and replaced by 7 Eleven, which brings us to today's topic Sengoku Rance a visual novel that carries the same strategy, conquer the world gameplay as seen in the Kichiko Rants and the Dai series. Here's the rundown. Rants, after taking the primary role in the upheaval of the magical nation of Zeth, decides to go to Japan. Not Nihon, but Japan in all caps, a floating island that's off the main continent. I would like to reiterate that this is not a Japan as we know it in our world, but a land modeled after the Sengoku era, the Warring States period full of samurais, ninjas, yokai, and demons. Here, Rance decided to take a vacation, bringing along Sil, with the express purpose of betting all the lovely ladies of this island nation. After a chance encounter with the lazy Oda Nobunaga, who was pretty tired of ruling his province, Rance receives the offer to become the secret shadow ruler of the Oda clan. Upon realizing that this would probably fall in line with his current plans, he takes the offer. An island nation plunged in constant war will soon be united one way or another, as Rance blazes his way through the nation. On a side note here, I know Manga Gamer translates it to Nippon. I understand why they did so, however I think Japan in all caps using the series lore to differentiate itself from Nihon that Kantaro comes from is a lot funnier. I do understand that a joke doesn't translate well though. Earlier I described the gameplay of Sengoku Rants as a Conqueror World strategy visual novel. It's surprisingly fun and addicting, but I will be the first one to admit that line probably doesn't mean much to anyone. So let's break it down. 
Sengoku Rants is a resource-based strategy game with the primary goal of conquering the entire nation of Japan. Every turn, you are allowed a specific number of action fans, which start out at a measly two, but increase as you play through the game. Your action fans can be used for a bunch of things, ranging from dungeon hunting for EXP and items, to increasing morale for the next battle, which is about as good of a use of your time as throwing it down a toilet would be. Some actions also require you to add up to 5 members to meet the required stats to start these events. You can see these stats from the troop menu. Can be lowered through multiple attempts. The next two types of events I bring up are probably what you will actually be spending all of your action fans on. First are these question mark events which indicate special events that can be considered important, from vital events to void game overs, events to recruit unique commanders, flags for starting different routes, and character events where you can watch unique commanders interact with rants. Second are red battle events, which can be separated into territory conquer battles and the boss showdowns against the leaders of other territories slash dungeon diving. Both battles work fairly differently, so we'll start it with the territory battles, which will be the majority of fights you engage in. Territory battles are where you will select up to 6 units to invade a territory adjacent to yours. Victory is determined by morale, which shifts depending on the damage done and the enemies defeated, with the defending armies gaining an initial boost. Battles are limited by the total number of turns, as well as the limited number of actions each unit can take. Some have unique attacks with special properties, with red ones being powerful attacks that drain all remaining action points. A unit power is determined by their stats, the amount of troops they have, and their specific class. Troops can be managed anytime before battle, and are limited by money and national power. Troops lost during battle will need to be replenished using money. While there are a bunch of classes, I'm not really going to get into it, but I will say that some can hit from the back line, while others can't. Attacking battles that you win means one more part of the territory captured, while winning defensive battles means you don't lose a territory. A province is yours after you capture all territories. Low HP enemy commanders may also be potentially captured and recruited with some requiring specific events. Leader showdowns and dungeon battles play out a bit differently. It's the same in the sense that you still fight using the same system, the difference is that your stats are not based on the total troops of each army, but rather mostly on their individual level, potentially their stats, and who they are, because if you know anything about Rance lore, you'll know people in this universe are indeed not created equal, with certain characters being far stronger than others with different level caps. These fights are to the death with enemies having infinite actions. Leader showdowns usually only involve Rance and Sill, while dungeon battles and final bosses allows you to rotate between all available commanders, even in battle. These are usually fun challenges to fight, although you better pray that you've been powering up Rance if you're on a higher difficulty. I'll just cover the three that I think are fairly important to a new coming player. First off, I'll talk a bit about the routes in the game. Sengoku Rance is comprised of four different routes. Sure, there are seven located right here, however, Monkey Slayer route is a free-for-all basically with no story, Archfiend route is a bad ending route that you can't actually win, and National route is actually free-for-all from the get-go where you can play as any clan you want. The most important fact I want to touch upon is that on your first playthrough, you're already locked onto the true canon route of the game, which leads into the sequel, Rant's Quest. I actually think this is a fine idea, as the main route of the game is pretty fantastic and does allow you to play against the majority of the factions. The rest of the routes, which you can access starting from your second playthrough, instead act as a what-if scenarios, each with a different main heroine. These heroines are Uesugi Kenshin, where you enter the Emperor race against the other greatest swordsmen of the land, Yamato Isoroku, where Rance comes to respect and cherish her, and Nanjoran, which primarily deals with Onis. My next tip is that keep at least one spot open at all times, because many unique commanders will join due to purple events or start of turn events, however these will not show up if you have all commander slots filled or not enough national power, so make sure to keep at least one spot open and 5 extra national power at all times. The other part I want to mention are action flags, which above all else, are the most important resource of the game in that it determines how many actions you can take per a turn. While you start out at 2, you can actually increase it up to a max of 5 with the Satisfaction bonus. Satisfaction is a stat which increases by accessing unique character events as well as H sings, doing the dirty, the devil's tango, whatever you want to call it. Every 10 you can select a bonus with action flags being increased at 50, 160, and 260. 
Obviously, it's the most important bonus by far. The second one that's pretty useful is calling for reinforcements, as it allows you to access unique commanders, who were key characters in previous games. Uruza, one of the key characters of Rand 6, is amazing, and my personal bias aside, is actually an incredibly strong tactician who will be useful from beginning to end. Aside from that, anything that buffs Rand's as he's required for nearly every boss fight in the game. Bonuses like Rand Slash and putting elite troops in his team are both great choices. I think I've made it pretty clear to most of you by this point that I like the Rand series. I appreciate their shocking amount of world building, and even while they're incredibly funny, they still manage to have some great character interactions. Both the visual novel elements and the gameplay are really good, even if they aren't exactly the highest budgeted products. I did another playthrough of it on the manga gamer version just the other day and man did I have a blast! Sengoku Rance was my favorite entry in the series for a pretty long time. Since Rance X came along, that hasn't been the case because that game kicks all sorts of major ass, but Sengoku Rance is still dang fun though. Not gonna lie, I have a huge nostalgic boner for the game, and I am willing to admit my perceptions of Sengoku Rance is definitely biased. Due to my completionist blood inside of me, when I first played it, I got kind of addicted. Addicted enough to play every route, use nearly every commander, and run through nearly every difficulty. And really, that right there is probably Sengoku Rance's greatest strength, cause the visual novel has some really high replayability, backed by what is a surprisingly great gameplay loop that has a decent level of challenge. Keeping track of your resources on a first playthrough is already not the easiest thing in the world to do, and on the hardest difficulty is an absolute nightmare. Most playthroughs of the game, outside the first several turns, ends up being a completely unique experience. Not because it's a newly generated world like a roguelike, but just because of the sheer amount of events hidden throughout the game. Every house outside of the two right next to you end up having all these insane events that happen while you fight them that really shakes things up. These events also change depending on who you decide to conquer first, which route you enter, especially which unique commanders you decide to recruit, as those are limited both by route choice and whether you have beaten the game already or not, if you can even find them in the first place. Finding and discovering them, getting to use the characters you were unable to use in previous playthroughs, all of that is the charm of the game. Plenty are also time limited, which puts a sense of urgency on a player, making each playthrough a bit more unique. It also helps that even though there are well over 50 unique commanders, they all have their own character events which lets you interact and learn about them, beyond just being this special JPEG to collect. Speaking of which, that's one thing about the game that I admit I love and hate at the same time. I love the fact that there are so many unique character events for each character, and I like the fact that there's actual effort and hardship requiring to clear them. At the same time though, just like Daibancho, Daiteikoku, and the rest of the Alisoft's STG Edogays, Actually, clearing the character, however, ends up as a complete hassle without a guide. While some just involve talking, others require specific characters or finding specific items. Despite that all, due to having a colorful cast like Masamune Date, the one-eyed dragon who's literally a giant eyeball riding a go-kart with a cute harem, it really made me want to seek out and find every single one of these events. Descending into the depth with Natori, watching the showdown between Soen and Gigai, all these events were fun to witness and make you care about them beyond their use as a unit. Sengoku Rance was probably the first visual novel game I played where the gameplay wasn't just an add-on accessory that the developer's slot would be a fun little distraction, but rather a core part of the entire product that they put time and effort into. Some examples of these kind of visual novels would be um, Galaxy Angels, Symphonic Rain, and Zetaimo. I bet you've never heard of that last one because I don't even remember how I stumbled upon it. What's better than that is that the gameplay is actually really fun and engaging. Wow, what a shocker. I swear most of these visual novel RPGs usually use that latter term quite loosely. Music is also stunningly good, and way better than I ever expected it to be. This part I will say is heavily dependent on what kind of music you like. And having grown up playing mostly old console games, something about Shade's music style really speaks to me. The use of electronic instruments, guitars, everything about it I really enjoy. I already mentioned this in my video on 10 of my favorite visual novel themes, but dang is Rebirth the Edge just an amazing rock out song. Not just that, Uesugi's Kenshin theme Mars is equally as fantastic, and the two battle tracks, Advance On and Slapping Fight, both get the energy pumping during any of those territory battles, right after the horn is blow. As for my favorite character of Sengoku Rance aside from Rance, 
it would have to be Uesugi Kenshin, which I admit is a boring choice since it's kind of the obvious one. It's like when someone asks you, wow, who's your favorite character in Fate? And you answer with Saber, because dang are Rin and Sakura trash, right? High five anyone? Anyone? Jokes aside, because Archer is clearly the best character, Uesugi Kenshin is really cute, and my favorite part would just have to be how sincerely she actually likes Rans. Guess you all know where my stamp comes from now though, right? It gets to the point where we see one of the few times in an entire franchise where this sort of direct affection is so foreign to Rance that it gets completely thrown off his normal behavior. It's really cute to watch. She also so happens to be an incredibly strong unit, both lore-wise and in terms of gameplay, easily contesting for top spot unless you decide to spend a way too much time overpowering Rance. If there's any part of her I dislike, I would have to say it's that hat, because it's not exactly very flattering on her. It's like a giant spike, as if it's about to start spinning and fly off to break galaxies. As for route preferences, I'd say the canon route followed by Kenshin's, followed by Yamato Isoroku's, with Nanja Run at dead last. Uesugi Kenshin's route offered a really fun spin on the game with the Emperor race. The concept of having to duel all the other greatest swordsmen of Japan is a really exciting one. It also gives a reason for you to have to conquer the entire map and visit every individual house. Yamato Isoroku's route changed things up with Rans showing a surprising side of himself that you don't see too often. The epilogue is also a really nice surprise, a glimpse into a possible future which was really cool considering that Rans X wouldn't come out for another 9 years. As for Ron's route, well, it would help if Nanja Ron was, what's the word again? Right, likeable. I mean, I get why she doesn't like Rance. Rance is basically trying to steal her from her boyfriend. Even that aside though, I just don't like the Sundere kind of character. I thought every route was fine, but I could have skipped Nanjo Rons and not felt bad about it. Which is probably a good thing since Ron's route is surprisingly easy to miss if you aren't trying to unlock it, as opposed to the other two, with a much stricter time window. She's also placed at the very end of the map, so it's harder to reach her unless you decide to commit to going one way or the other. I suppose some of you are probably curious if there are any major differences from this official manga gamer translation as opposed to the Taka June 2009 version. They practically use the same version of the game, and heck, I can even use my old save files on this new version. The translation is overall better though, as Taka June was pretty famous for having overly literal translations, most likely a result of relying on some sort of translation software a bit, but I will say for a fan translation it was pretty good. Fonts are also nice and bold, easy to look at, along with stats being color-coded now, which is... great? Nothing too special, but it's a nice touch. And um, Okatoki from Yokubari Saboten is still bugged where you still can't get any of her affection bonuses. Seeing as how that bug is in the game, I'm assuming it's the 1.04 version of the game, with nothing extra added, although they did make the clear report a lot more fun to look at. Oh, and names have been reversed for English reading, so first, then last name as opposed to last name, then first name, as how it's normally read in Japanese, so Kenshin Uesugi as opposed to Uesugi Kenshin. I'm so used to the Japanese way of reading that I kind of felt a little weird about it, but you might not mind it. Also, while uh, playing, I did find this one weird bug where the music started to overlap with each other, as if the same track was being played on a delay, especially apparent during Star of Turn events, but for some reason it disappeared on the second day I was playing the game, so I don't know, maybe it's there, maybe it's not. So yeah, that was Sengoku Rants. I know many people are pretty scared of diving into the Rants franchise for a myriad of reasons, whether it be because of the fact that it's 18+, plus, because the main character's purpose is to bone every fair maid of the land or whatnot. I hope I've shown that there is quite a bit to look forward to beyond just those two aspects of the game. There's a ton of funny dialogue, great reactions, but more than all of that, a surprising amount of heart. Not gonna lie, Rance does some pretty heinous things, which is probably made funnier by My Glorious Days blasting during every age scene and him calling his dick a hyper weapon, but you also get him begrudgingly respect some of his companions, show true concern when Kohime goes missing, respecting the last wishes of his friend, and protecting all the women by slaying Evo even if he's doing it for the wrong reasons. It may not be the newest game, because it's been out for like 11 years and it's only finally getting translated now, but it's still a lot of fun and I still had a great time playing it just the other day. 
And I'll say, if there was any entry to try out first in this franchise, Sengoku Rant is as fabulous a start as any. I believe that only by trying will you truly know whether Rant is a series for you or not. Regardless, I recommend it wholeheartedly, it's exceedingly fun, very replayable, with some wild and memorable characters that I will always have a soft spot for. Also, as I said in the beginning, I'm curious to know if all of you lovely viewers like this more opinion-heavy version where you can hear more of my thoughts on the game in question, or did you enjoy it more when I went really in-depth explaining mechanics? Or if you think I should shorten the gameplay section even more than this, tell me down below in the comments, I do read everything. If you enjoy the content, the respective buttons are there and there as always. And hey, there's my Manga Gamer affiliate link for Sengoku Rants in the description box. If you use my link to buy the game, I do get a percentage of the purchase, which will help me in finding more visual novels. So if this primer got you interested and you want to support me, please do use it. Finally, there's my Twitter if you want to follow me to see what I'm up to in between videos, or sometimes I ask suggestions on what to cover next. So, to answer the question I posed last time of how long I could keep it up, seems like the answer was a week as usual. Feels bad. Probably won't be the last time, but yeah, I got caught up playing um, Trolls in the Sky Trilogy if you heard of that, which I'm still currently playing. Ah oh, well, see you next time.